going to show you how you can set up a remote desktop connection to another computer on your network or a computer somewhere else anywhere in the world. Uh, it could be you need to connect up to your computer or your server at home and you are currently out of state um, and have access to another computer that has the internet or you could be at work and you need to access a file or an application on your home computer. To set this up I kind of cheated a little bit just to make the recording easier. I already set up a remote desktop connection through my network. As you see, computer one will be acting as the client machine, and our target machine will be acting as computer two. Uh, I set the desktop picture to kind of help you, um, you know, see that. The first thing we need to do uh, is actually go to our target machine or our computer that we want to connect up to. You're going to have to set this up. Um, at that machine, basically turn it on to the keyboard, mouse, and monitor connected up to it and uh, log into that system. Um, I am going to connect up to it and this is our computer 2 or our target machine. This is the computer that we want to have access to. So to set this up, what we need to do is right click on my computer, go to properties, and it will bring up a window similar to this, system properties. It will start out under general, under the general tab. All you need to do is just go to the remote tab and activate it and you'll see some settings here. If you want to use remote assistance um, from this computer, you want to activate the first one. If not, you can leave that unselected. The main concern here is actually setting up the second portion, which is the remote desktop. Uh, you can allow users to connect up to it. Just to let you know, uh, you might want to make a note on the name of your computer. Mine is named Garrett2. Uh, select remote users. If the user doesn't have an admin account and is set up to a limited access, you'll have to go under here and add the name manually. Um, I'll kind of show you that later on what, I, on what I'm talking about. So right now, we need to set up an admin account to actually access this computer. What you need to do is just allow this, activate it, and once you activate it and apply, you'll notice that it might take a few seconds for your computer to basically register your firewall, uh, to set up your firewall to accept incoming connections. Once you have this set up, you can press OK, and your computer is ready to be connected up to. Uh, what you need to do is set up a user. Like I said before, you'd have to set up an, an administrator account to log into the system. Um, if it's going to be a limited account and not an administrator, you need to actually go back in your settings there like I showed you and add the users under that window. So what we need to do is add a user. Let's go to Start, Settings, Control Panel. We'll go to our user accounts and you'll see some users that I've already set up on this computer. I have admin account, a friend account, and a guest account. The guest account is currently deactivated. We'll need to set up a new user account for this tutorial. So what we'll do is we will go to create a new account and we're going to name the test user test. And like I said, you can create an, a computer admin or an limited account. If it's under a limited account, you need to set it up in that one window for the user accounts. Uh, for easier access, more than likely you're going to be accessing this target machine. Make sure it's set to computer administrator. It's not going to connect correctly. So once you have this selected, Go to create account, and you'll see that we have our test account created. A uh, thing to keep in mind, too, is when you're creating this account and you're going to be accessing your computer over, uh, say, like a different network, uh, say if you're at work and you need to access your computer at home, you can set this up certainly, but you also might want to create a backup account. The reason for that is if you're using your test user account and your computer uh, prematurely shuts down, and you and you go to open it back up and it won't come up and we've all know what that what that uh, what that can do it it will give you trouble uh, you might have to restart your computer um, the reason why I say set up another account and what we'll do we'll set up another account too we'll just get test two we'll make them also admin and now you see we have two test accounts here test and test two um, click on your test account and make sure you have a password if you don't have a password set up your remote desktop connection is not going to work. So create a password. We're going to name it just a test password. We don't need to make any hints. We'll change that. And let's go back to the main menu. We're going to change another account. 
We'll change test2, set up the password, also password is test, and we'll create the password. So now we have both accounts set up, test and test2. So if we're on the test account, we're on an application A, and application A prematurely uh, shuts down or closes or gives you an error message, and you go to open it back up and it won't open up, the only way to fix that is by re rebooting your computer. Unfortunately, since we're using remote desktop connection, if you reboot your computer, you can't access your remote desktop connection until another user logs in locally on that machine. So a little workaround I found out is if you ever run into this problem, what you can do is just go to start, log off your connection, and when you go to set up another connection, log on, log on as test two. It'll load up the test two settings, and once the once it's all loaded up, you can actually log out of test two and log back into test. That will reset any uh, any problems that you may have. Um, another tip too is if you need to access your target machines. Oops, telephone. If you need to access your target machine's uh, Alt Control Delete menu, when you're using Remote Desktop Connection, you have to press Alt Control End. This will bring up your target machine's Alt Control Delete system. You'll notice if I press Alt Control Delete, it's going to bring up my client machine's information, which I don't want. So you're going to want to use Alt Control End to bring that up. You can end you can end processes or applications or actually you can shut down from this uh, or restart or log off. So that's a little tip. Okay, so we have our account set up. We need to actually set up our client machine to connect up to our target machine. Before we do this, before we move on, you'll need to get the outside IP address for your network if you want to connect up to this target machine, say from work or if you're out of state. So what we can do is let's go and get our outside IP address. There's several ways of doing this, but for now I'll show you a website that I use to get an outside IP address. I actually use www.ipmonkey.com. It's a fairly simple and easy way of getting your outside IP address. You'll notice here, here's my outside IP address. I can use that to connect up to my uh, computer or remote desktop connection. So, let's go back to our main client machine. We'll close this window here. Okay, we'll end our session. And you'll notice we're back on our client machine. In order to bring up the main settings or the configuration for our remote desktop connection, we can go to Programs, Accessories, Communications, Remote Desktop Connection. Another way we can pull this up is if you don't find it under your Programs, Accessories, Communications window, or under the Accessories window, is if you go to Start, Run, and you can type in the command MSTSC, and then just press Enter, and it should bring it up. You'll notice that we need an IP address, or the computer name if you're on a local network. The one thing I forgot to show you was how to get the IP address to your target machine. So let's go back to our target machine. We'll go to Start, Run, and we'll type in CMD. That opens up the command prompt. Another way of opening this is if we go to Start, Programs, Accessories, Command Prompt. Let's type in IP config, and this will bring up our local IP address. This is our local IP address on the network, and like I showed you before, if you go to www.ipmonkey.com, you can use another program if you wanted to, this is our external IP address. We're going to use this IP address if we're going to connect from outside of our network, and we're going to use this local IP address to connect within the network. Okay, since we're connecting within the network, we have our IP address. Make a note of this. That's a 192.168.1.5. Let's go back to our client machine. Our client machine, it's going to ask us some settings here. Uh, when it first comes up, it's not going to ask you for username and password. What you can do is press options and it'll bring up more options for you. Uh, for your computer, you want to put in your IP address, 192.168.1.5, or if you're in the local area network, you can type in your computer name. In this case, it would be Garrett 2. You can't use computer name if you're going to be connecting from outside your local network. Say if you're at work and you want to connect up to your target machine, you would have to use the IP address of uh, what I showed you before at ipmonkey.com. 
for your username, you don't have to enter this right now, but you can enter it and save it under a new account if you want to make an easy connection like you saw I did uh, previously. Since we're on the local area network, our domains are going to be 192.168.1.5. If you're connecting from outside of your network, say if from like your company that you're working at or from outside of state, you'd want to enter the outside IP, excuse me, outside IP address that you found in ipmonkey.com. So both of these should be matching. Also, before you go to connect, just make sure some of the settings are corrected. Uh, you know, for your display, you can make your your display come up um, kind of at a lower quality to give you more um, more speed, or you could set this for more quality rather than speed. So, really, these settings are going to allow.